Well, over 90% of network bandwidth is going to be consumed by video in just two years' time. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Grant Lusty. I'm joined today by good Jared afternoon. Mansfield from, uh, from Genoi. Um, and at, in the next 15 minutes, we're going to show you how you can have face-to-face -face business meetings and uh, never have to buy a pair of suit pants again. <laughs> Thanks, Grant. Nice shorts, by the way. Cheers, mate. Right, hang on to your hats, folks. Out of all the presentations and all the, the technology that you see this afternoon, this is the one that's about to explode. And when you think of how we're going to communicate and collaborate going forward, you know, video technology is going to be massive in transforming that market. Now, you've seen a few clips today on what, could, what could be, uh, it could be like in the future. We're going to focus on what technology is available right here now today. Great. So, hey, look, I started out that, um, uh, the, that section with a comment about where video is going and how business video is exploding. But as we know, you know, businesses don't just adopt uh, technologies for technology's sake as much as we would uh, like them to. They always come from a business uh, imperative. And um, our business environment is actually changing. Um, you know, when we look at uh, meetings and uh, decision making, well, you know, no longer are decisions being made by um, isolated, uh, executive teams sitting on the uh, on the top floor of um, of your head office, as Paul Knight uh, was talking about today. His um, executive team is actually distributed around the globe, and so teams are being distributed. And they're not just uh, decisions aren't just being made by you know the top down now. We're seeing a lot more sort of project teams, um, virtual teams. Has, has anyone here been part of a, a virtual team or been seconded into some team at some stage? Lots of hands going up. You know what I mean? It's a competitive environment. You need to make decisions faster. And uh, now more than ever, you need to be working closer with you know, your suppliers, your partners, and, um, and even your customers. And so you know, what we're seeing is that people, lots of people, still need to get together, but you're not necessarily going to be all in the same place at the same time. And when you look at how you get that information out to your employees, um, well, you know, we said decisions are being made faster. You're going to need to get that information out. Everyone wants their employees to have the very latest information so that your workforce is aligned. Um, we used to call them Gen Ys. I'm not quite sure what the Gen is at the moment, but certainly not the guys with the grey hair. Uh, coming through your work workforce now. Um, in my day, we used to say, hey, knowledge is power. Well, these guys are a lot more comfortable with sharing information. And they use a lot of technologies today to do that. Um, and we have a much more mobile workforce. I mean, I, I sort of work on the road a lot. Jared certainly does. Usually when you look around the audience, you can find at least someone doing their email on a, uh, on a mobile phone. Um, and so everybody is much more mobile today. So how do we deal with this? Thanks, Grant. So what are we talking about with video communications today? We're talking high definition audio and video. We're talking lifelike images. We're talking virtual meeting, meeting experiences. Yeah, this is almost as good as being there in the flesh. And then the technology is adapted to suit different workspace environments, all the way from the immersive boardroom, which we have quite a few of these in this building. Hopefully we can showcase to some of you this afternoon. Right down to a multi-purpose or a branch office environment, even down to the tablet or the work, personal workspace, uh, wherever that may be. It could be in the branch, your home, or even in the office. And when it comes to sharing information or communicating information out to distributed work, forces, uh, even, even out to customers. You know, gone are the days of the static poster in the lunchroom. Who manages to stay on top of all your emails these days? And we're talking technologies like digital signage or even video on demand tools like Cisco Show and Share. All of these uh, applications we're actually showcasing next door here and keen to talk to you about today. But really, are, we are talking about sharing information from any device, anywhere, anytime. And we live and breathe this ourselves in this building. If you just walk around, we're probably the ideal case study for video, uh, probably in New Zealand even. Yeah. We live in, like I say, we live and breathe this technology. And here's, here's just an example of some of our larger meeting rooms. We've put in Auckland, Wellington, and Sydney. 80% utilisation. I heard a voice in the back there. <laughs> <laughs> Might still be the weekend. 80% um, utilisation. When you consider the global stat uh, for utilisation video adoption is between 3 to 5%. You know, this is massive. We took 30% of our travel budget and we invested in building these rooms. And we had an ROI within six months. Yeah, you know, um, you know that's not just a Genoi phenomenon. Um, obviously, you know, Cisco's a, uh, an, an avid user of this technology ourselves. We, um, 
We conduct over a thousand meetings a day uh, worldwide on telepresence. Um, and give you an example, we have a room in Sydney that has 110% uh, utilisation, which means that it is being used for nine hours a day every single day of the working week. So truly phenomenal. So um, we're going to have a look at a little bit about why now for, uh, for video. Here's some of the traditional challenges we've faced in rolling out this technology. If you look at bandwidth, obviously the top one. Music to all of our ears with UFB coming around the corner. Well, we've looked at creative ways to deploy video, either by throttling back the experience or pushing it off, off the network into technologies like ISDN. Either way, we've given our users a sort of an average standard def type of experience. When you add in a complex remote, uh, not to mention in the past very high expensive uh, barrier um, to entry costs, that whole reliability and that experience really did make it for users a plug and pray type technology to use. Most of us, I know speaking to some of you in the audience uh, previously, would typically avoid using that video conferencing investment in the past. Yeah, so we'd like to say that um, you know, we've been able to take some of those uh, inhibitors and we would now say that they are, uh, they are actually enablers. Um, certainly this conference has been a lot around uh, availability of bandwidth. Um, on the cost side of things, um, you even heard uh, uh, Paul Knight talk about it uh, with Fletcher's that they actually took budget out of their travel budget to fund that. So what we're seeing is that video is no longer an IT budget spend. It's actually coming from other parts of the, um, the organisation as they start to realise the benefits to their parts of the business that video can bring. Now on these other ones here, rather than talk through them, what we're going to do is show you a little bit of, a, give you a little bit of an idea and a taster of what it, what it uh, typically takes to, um, you know, before a meeting, how about scheduling it, about what happens when you walk in the room and start it, and what the experience is like when you're in that meeting. So, starting off, um, who here can use Outlook? Oh, I should see most hands, great. Has everyone here who's used Outlook booked a meeting with it? Pretty much nods right. So if you can do that, then you can book a teleconference. So um, all you need to do is you, as you would uh, normally um, start a me oh, sorry, schedule a meeting, you um, give it a subject, you invite some people, multiple people, I need a room, you add the room as a resource. Well, if you've done that, then you've booked a telepresence video conference because as you add that room in, the resource gets added and job's done. It couldn't be simpler. So really simple to schedule. Um, and when you, walk, when you start these things, how many people have been here? You walk in the room and you're going, ah, oh, where's the remote? Um, I think the IT guy has locked it in the cupboard or it's out on the table. Oh, oh, no, you pick it up, you found it. You try, oh, no, hang on, that's a TV one or is that the overhead projector or, you know, if you've got one of those really flash rooms, the blinds are going up and down, you know. So, um, hey, throw away the remote. This is what we're talking about now is a, an intuitive touch screen, either a dedicated screen or it's on a touch screen phone. You walk in there, the meeting name that you created is there, it's got your name against it, you press that button and the video starts. So it really, really couldn't be simpler. And then what's it like um, you know, during the, uh, the meeting? Well, um, has everyone been on one of these sort of video conferences? You know? You're kind of sitting there and you're going, right, geez, I wish Dave was here. Where the hell is Dave? He is always late. And then you go, oh, no, actually Dave is there. Dave is the uh, third smudge to the right. And obviously your meeting's not really you know, starting the way you want it to go. So no more smudge cam. What we're talking about is a full high definition face to face. And as Jared, uh, Jared said right at the beginning, it's an eyeball to eyeball experience. Everybody feels like they're included in that meeting. And even Paul talked about the inclusion of people in meetings when you have that high definition of ex experience. Now obviously this is, this is at the high end, so um, you have the opportunity today to, to see um, some of uh, Geni's implementation of, uh, of telepresence in the smart meeting rooms. I encourage you to go and have a look at that. Um, but we also have right next door, we have uh, examples of what we call a multi-purpose um, system where you wheel in a, a, a screen and camera into a, a multi-purpose room, right down to personal executive desktop systems that we have next door, come and have a play with those. But we even take that right down to, uh, to desktop because Jared said right at the beginning, any place, any time. Now this is not just like um, you know, going into Dick Smith and buying yourself a high def camera and hooking it up and you're going to get that experience. Uh, we combine special technology in the camera. We have a special high definition camera that plugs into your PC, meaning that you can do 720p 
um, high definition video on a normal laptop. You don't need a quad core PC to do this. And um, for all those sales guys out there, you'll know that it, how, how difficult this is for me to say, but um, some of this technology, if you go to uh, um, uh, ciscojabbervideo.com, you can actually get some of this technology for free today. Ouch. <laughs> For you. Um, with some limited <laughs> capacity, and we'll, we'll show you how that, uh, that works. And um, of course, the, uh, the great nirvana of, uh, of everything today is being able to bring video down onto, um, down onto tablets. So uh, you may even have it up on the screens up here. Um, here's Carl sitting in one of the smart meeting rooms, and this is, so this is showing you know, high-end telepresence right down to tablet interoperability, so you can join a, um, uh, you know, a telepresence room from a tablet. Okay, and you can even, with this technology, you can even invite customers into it. So if they don't even have, uh, you know, not part of your network, but you want them to join in one of these sessions, you can invite them in, download the software for free, and they can be in that meeting with you. So a game-changing technology there. Thank you very much, Carl. Mm. He was the guy speaking in the background, by the way. Before. He, he was moving <laughs> too. Okay, so uh, as a networking uh, company, it would be kind of remiss of me not to talk about the value of the network um, uh, in doing video. And this is not just about you know, having lots of speed in the access network. There was a question earlier on about uh, bottlenecks, and everybody is, um, is aware of you know, that bottlenecks might move around. So that's where combinations of you know, our technology, Genai's uh, WAN services, being able to provide that end-to-end -end quality of service network so that the network recognises that you've plug, plugged in a video device, it automatically says, right, that's video, I know what sort of quas I need to provide to it, um, I'll put it in the right queue so it goes over the WAN with the right quality of service, so you do get that full quality of experience, end-to-end, -end, reliable, first time every time. Nice. Thanks, Grant. So why Geno, you know, why Cisco? You know, we've been doing this for over 10 years now. Um, we have a dedicated team, we can service all of New Zealand. Uh, we've actually implemented global solutions, as you've heard from Fletcher's earlier on today. And we've aggressively partnered with Cisco. We were the first partner here in New Zealand to get our master accreditation uh, with Cisco. And when you look at the Cisco story, you know, it extends just beyond video. It, it, it talks about digital media, being able to share content and make it available for users to be able to get it from any device, any time, is the key. Uh, an example being, let's say you, uh, you book a video conference. Some users couldn't make that conference. The ability to be able to record that, that meeting, publish it on a server, and allow those users to watch that meeting in their own time, even from a tablet device. We've invested aggressively in taking our cloud proposition with video to market. We've uh, put some, some pretty uh, intelligent devices in our core platform to allow customers to enjoy some really rich, intelligent video services at a fraction of the cost of doing it yourself. Uh, again, we have trans-Tasman reach, but uh, even more importantly, and the success of the telephone um, adheres to this, you need to be able to do it globally. So we have service provider um, relationships with other um, ability to, to push fibre uh, video anywhere in the world. I think one of the key things, though, uh, is that we can put together a full end-to-end -end solution from your design of your network connectivity all the way to tailoring a solution to meet your budget and the type of experience that you want for users. But I think the most important thing up here is for any customer to ask any supplier, do you use the technology yourselves? You know, and we live and breathe this stuff. Again, this, this building is a, is a testament to that technology and we're keen to talk to you about the advantages that it can bring to your organisations. Have you, Grant? Cool, so um, you know, as the slide says up here, hey, seeing is believing, so um, come through, please uh, see the demo, play with it, make some calls, see how simple, and, uh, simple it is. Um, take advantage of um, going into one of the smart meeting rooms. But um, you know, I even say even better than seeing is believing is kind of experiencing it um, in a true, not just sort of like, oh yeah, this works really well, but have a meeting. Um, both Genai and Cisco run programs we call Have a Meeting on Us. Uh, we can give you reach uh, throughout New Zealand and uh, Australia and uh, pretty much anywhere in the world. Um, and so we, you know, you're welcome to come in um, to our facilities and actually have one of your own internal business meetings on us. Uh, Paul Knight from, from Fletcher's talked about, um, uh, talked about their implementation. I'm sure he won't mind me mentioning that um, they actually had two board meetings 
um, on our facilities between uh, New Zealand, Australia, the United States and London. They had two board meetings on our facilities uh, prior to making that decision. So they used this, this technology in anger. So um, uh, the invitation is out there, come and use it, or even better, invite your execs and um, hey, you can tell them to uh, wear their boardies. Thanks very much. Thank you.